Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television Live from my headquarters in Cameroon's economy capital, Douala. I am Babla Jonathan. In our top stories in this edition of the news, a child dies in a fire incident in the West Regional Chief Town, Bafusam. The child was bent to death in the course of the inferno in that part of the country. We'll be bringing you details in this edition of the news and out of the country, the World Health Organization instructs countries around the world to stop the administration of the AstraZeneca anti-COVID-19 vaccination on grounds that there have been several reports of uh, complications developed by some persons after the administration of the AstraZeneca vaccine. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. We begin this newscast in the West region of the Republic of Cameroon with this human interest story. A child who dies in a fire incident in the town of Bafusam. The child was bent to death in the course of the inferno, whose cause is yet to be clearly established. Smanji Gangebre. <laughs> Shock and grief at the Camden family residence in Bafusam, West region of Cameroon. The high emotions follow the painful death of young Ivor Mark, engulfed by flames in a burning family house at the Mary Rura neighborhood of the city of Bafusam. According to the mother of the deceased, the incident occurred at night. Um, at night? He went to sleep in their room in the next building as usual. I stayed in a parlor in this building and later fell asleep. Suddenly, the lights went off and I left the parlor to my room. Just when I could sleep, I got someone shouting, Fire! Fire! I opened the door and realized that the main building was in flames. I went towards the door knocked and called my son but my son could not come i called my stepmother who succeeded to come out through the window and i kept calling my son to no avail a version of the story that ties with that of other family members and victims Nebos called me at about 2 a.m. and told me that fire has consumed four shops here and killed a child who was asleep the grandmother who was also in the building struggled out through the window an unfortunate incident which occurred while others were out for a week there was a funeral here at Total and all the children were there. The late Ivo decided to go home that he did not want to stay out for long due to the cold weather. Curious enough, the ravaged residence is located just a few meters away from the buffers and base of the firefighting unit of the Cameroonian army. There were people drinking next door but could not help when the bike rider alerted them. Apart from the demise of 14-year-old Ivan Mark, enormous material loss has been registered from the four shops and one family residence ravaged. The pain is inestimable. For me, I'm Stone Sander reporting there. This new divisional officer of the Mayo Chanaga Division says that inhabitants of his area of command guilty of cooperating with militants of the Nigerian terrorist sect Boko Haram will be severely punished according to the law. He was uh, making that declaration after his visit to the localities in his area of command. Manjika Gebre has more. It was a hectic trip for the newly installed senior divisional officer of Mayo Chanaga to Mozogo on his maiden meet the people tour after taking up duties.
David Dako Dibango went through the same pains and sufferings the population have been witnessing on a stretch of road whose construction work have been abandoned for the past seven years. The 35-kilometer stretch of road from Mokolo to Mogode or Mokolo Turu is a veritable nightmare. Apart from the road Wahala, the population of Mozogo told the new SDO that for three years they have been without a leader since Jalamido died. They also complained about the unavailability of portable drinking water from Mozogo. The SDO moved over to Buha, a village in the borderline between Cameroon and villages within its zone of jurisdiction. Employees of the Agricultural Research Institute for Development in Dibamba in the littoral region of the country have downed their tools. They are protesting against some irregularities, notably the, non, uh, the, the failure by the administration of the institution to increase their salary and also to give them some uh, production bonuses and as well as insurance coverage and they are now going without work they are not going to work and they are asking that if this is not done they will not return to work as soon as they report with exasperated looks and hands supporting their jaw, these employees of the Agricultural Research Institute for Development, IRAD, Jibamba branch in the littoral region say, reasons for protesting are numerous, including no distinction awards, non-payment of production and other bonuses. Our advantages have been completely deduced from our salaries, making our salaries to become very little. And with that situation, we cannot cope with it. We want our, our advantage that have been reduced to be restored back in our salaries, meaning they prim the uh, prim the position and they prim the responsibility. For long term now, we don't have our allowances. Children, we don't have money for our children. We don't know what is going on. The problems are too much. We are working. We do not have distinctions. You, when, are we, when we are going to on retirement, what is going to prove that we are we are working? We don't have medals. Nothing, nothing, nothing. We need all these things. There are so many. All of them, since 12 years, have not benefited health coverage despite the dangers involved in carrying out their activities. Our problem of CMPS, our hospital is empty. When we are sick, we are the ones to buy our drugs. We are the ones to go to the hospital. With what type of salary are we going to treat ourselves? Another reason that pulls them to rise up with placards bearing different messages is the suspension of their personnel representative. They demand his return. Our, one, our president, our delegate, Mr. Fongon Jonathan, who has been suspended for reasons that we do not know, we need him back in our center. We need him back to come and continue doing his work in our center. We do not know why he has been suspended. The commander was here and he said he is, he is not incorporated in any step that was done on the 25th of, of, of February 2021. He's innocent. So why, is, why are they still keeping him outside? Why is he not working? We need him back in our center. These canker worms, they say, have been eating them up for long, but were scared to take brief action. They would fear now for, for explain them, because you explain them, either they move you for work or they transfer you. But now I did, I did 25 years for work for you. No change. Salary, no change. No, no change for anything. With their tools downed, they wish their top hierarchy and the government take quick actions towards better pay, grants of bonuses and awards, and most especially health coverage. We do not have problem with anybody. All we want is our living condition to be changed. Councillors in the opaque city of Limbe in the southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon put through a training on the ongoing decentralization process for effective implementation of decentralization and finance laws within their respective municipalities for the growth, development and well-being of their municipalities and its uh, people and uh, the uh, people and of course uh, this was true during a workshop uh, during which they were reminded that they will be accountable to the population. Davidson Maimon. 
there is no academic criteria or level of education to have before one can become a municipal councillor. This, some political analysts opine, is the most contributing factor to the poor management of most councils, given that a good number of councillors do not master council text, with most having little interest of knowing. Added to this, public opinion or contribution by law is not allowed during council session. To make things worse, councillors most often are forced to two party line rather than the interest of the population that voted them. People just think decentralization is just about putting a mayor to put their budget and just all about. No, people have to take active parts in the activities of their municipality. When you, a councillor, go to make a control about the budget, you must know how things are going to. to how money is launching in the local communities. These and more are some of the worries a local non-governmental organization seek to redress through the empowerment of councillors and the public on the decentralization and finance tax. Explain globally the general code and to highlight the part of the general code where uh, the, the, uh, the citizen participation are more increased. We want more people to, to know all those laws and to know all those techniques. We must know that the, the law now gives the, the right to the population to come to the council and ask information about all which is going on in the council. According to one of the resource person, the original delegate for local development, Chief Mukete Joseph Nebale, the public has the right to hold their councillors accountable. You have the right as a citizen to question your mayor on certain projects, on certain issues that are not going well in your municipality. He stressed, party politics should not interfere with council management. You cannot tell me that I have a project, a contract to be paid, and then I have to go and call that the Minister of Finance or Minister of Decentralization should come and instruct the mayor to pay. Those bottlenecks are built among us. The seminar, which is the first phase of a pilot project involving eight councils in Cameroon with two from the southwest regions, organizers regret mayors are lukewarm for councillors to take part. Administrative officials in the Opankam Division, West Region of the Republic of Cameroon are stepping up the fight against coronavirus after five students of the uh, Lycée Classique de Bafang were tested positive for coronavirus. Immaculate Fogui has more. The first and second wave of the coronavirus seems not to bother some students, like it is the case here at Government Technical School Baboni in the Open Camp Division West Region. A good number of the students do not have their face mask on, with others disrespecting the one meter distancing measure. On the 9th of March 2021, five students of Lisi Classic of Bafang were tested positive. The spike in COVID 19 cases in school milieus in the Open Camp Division has pushed the senior divisional officer to organize this meeting. Out of the 5,211 persons tested, 70 were tested positive. Within nine months in the year 2020, for two positive cases were registered. In 2021, we experienced a spike in cases as we registered over half of the number of cases we had in 2020. Luc Ndongo, the senior divisional officer of the Open Camp Division, urged the entire population to be vigilant and respect government's anti-COVID-19 measures. According to Jean-Claude Abosolo, the district medical officer, out of the 70 positive cases registered, including nine health personnel, four deaths were recorded between January 22nd and March 9th in 2021. And the Southwest Regional Delegate of Public Health reveals that the second wave of the coronavirus is already recording cases in the Southwest Region of the Republic of Cam uh, Cameroon. And the uh, Dr. Bongo Zakios Nanji made the revelation on uh, Tuesday, that is today, at the West Governor's Office during an evaluation meeting. There is Jato Farsindito Samboya. The process of law and order will be around to make sure that people wear their mask. And uh, in all the checkpoints, like control, those who don't wear masks 
they will see, they will, they will drop, dry their mask before they go back to in the in the public services. Let everybody wear a mask. If you don't wear a mask, you are not allowed to enter. In the market, no men. At the entrance, the main entrance of the market, put the hand washing hand washing point as many as you can inside the market. The bar is seen more more than fifty feet. That is the general recommendation from the head of government. And the distanciation in the bar. When you see that those recommendations are not respected, you just close the bar. In the public transport, Everybody, but public transport in your car. I don't think uh, if you are driving your car, I don't think that is necessary for you to wear a mask. If it is a taxi with many other passengers, it is an obligation for you to wear a mask. To, to wear a mask. Uh, from the indicators we have at our level, uh, there is every reason to believe very strongly that we are already into the second wave. Uh, this is even so true if you look at our geometric curve for the southwest region. We realize that from the beginning of this year, uh, we have registered an exponential increase in the number of the cases of COVID-19. Uh, so what I think we should be doing is to get back to joint birth, to go back to the uh, measures that were prescribed by the government and WHO and we, we start it all over again. That is to say all the barrier measures must be reinforced, testing and sensitization must be reinforced, and everyone who thinks um, or who feels a bit sick would the science, so either mimicking the science or having the true symptoms of science, uh, should get to one of our centers, say Dr. Just as the president himself said, and get treated, and get advice, and get treated on time. And Cameroon's Minister of Public Health, Dr. Manauda Malachi, says that the country is going to hold the importation of the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine. And of course, before this announcement, our reporter Charles Sekome spoke to some Cameroonians on the choice of Cameroon to administer the AstraZeneca vaccine. And this is what they told him in this report. Since the announcement made by the Minister of Public Health in Cameroon on the choice of the AstraZeneca vaccine in the fight against the plaguing coronavirus pandemic, Cameroonians have been keenly monitoring and observing the global controversies around the vaccine. Because this growing COVID-19 pandemic has affected the entire globe by altering lives as Cameroon now records 601 deaths as a result of this pandemic. Cameroonians have put to question the effectiveness of the AstraZeneca vaccine due to the fact that more than a dozen countries, mostly in Europe, have suspended the use of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine over fears the shot may have some recipients to develop blood clots. Sweden and Latvia became the latest nations to halt the rollout following moves by Germany, Italy, France, Spain, Denmark, Norway and the Netherlands among others. While investigation is ongoing, the European Medicines Agency remains of the view that the benefits of the AstraZeneca vaccine in preventing COVID-19 outweighs the risks of possible side effects. The European Medicines Agency, EMA, Europe's medicines regulator, will meet on Thursday to discuss the information gathered to decide whether the vaccine contributed to the thromboembolic events in those inoculated. In a recent tweet, Cameroon Minister of Public Health makes it clear that he has submitted the problems concerning the side effects of the AstraZeneca vaccine to the Scientific Council, NITAG, for advice. However, reassurances appears to have done little to calm doubts in the minds of Cameroonians who are patiently waiting to see the next move of their government in the fight against the coronavirus pandemic. 
and the Minister of Public Health of the Republic of Cameroon, as I said earlier, indicated that Cameroon is going to hold the importation of the AstraZeneca anti-COVID-19 vaccine after reports that the vaccine might have possible, uh, may possibly have some side effects, some negative side effects. And he went further to say Cameroon is seeking expert advice and will not in any way endanger the lives of citizens. It should be noted that South Africa equally uh, halted the use of the vaccine due to studies that reveal that the AstraZeneca vaccine offers reduced protection from COVID-19, notably with regards to the South African variant of coronavirus. And the World Health Organization has uh, called on countries to stop the administration of the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine. Earlier, the World Health Organization backed the, uh, backed the continuous use of the AstraZeneca AstraZeneca vaccine after several countries had decided to suspend its rollout amid reports of some possible uh, or people developing blood clot after receiving it. Take a listen to the director of the World Health Organization. Since our last press conference on Friday, several more countries have su suspended the use of AstraZeneca vaccines as a precautionary measure after reports of blood clots in people who had received the vaccine from two batches produced in Europe. This does not necessarily mean these events are linked to vaccination, but it's routine practice to investigate them. And it shows that the surveillance system works and that effective controls are in place. So the recommendation at this point is that the risk benefit of not vaccinating using AstraZeneca vaccines and other vaccines outweigh the risk of the COVID infection, which we know has a, a significant impact on, on people with severe disease, hospitalization, and death. Coming up, meet the man who stopped at nothing to feed his family in Lesotho, South Africa. This story sheds a unique light on plight of Lesotho mining families. Cuts yours. Ash, can you please see you please how to manage your family? How to live with your family? the <laughs> Sasa <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Nearly <laughs> 
Thanks for joining us in Talking Points. We are receiving a political analyst and historian, Gentle Clovis. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks. Good evening, Babylon, Jonathan. And uh, you can all still, I'm happy to be here. I'm sure this is my second time on the political issue. Right. The national president of the Popular Action Party, Jean Denis, uh, says that O.C. Joshua's signature on the petition from uh, some 60 members of parliament, of the lower house of parliament in Cameroon to the American Congress over the security situation in the Cameroon was a serious scandal. O.C. Joshua is the first vice president of the Social Democratic Front and according to Jean Denis, the signature from a politician of his caliber, from a political party, notably of the opposition and particularly the SDF is the worst political blunder of his career and now and tomorrow the president of the PAP went further to say that uh, was uh, expecting he was expecting the SDF National Executive Committee resolution to request the 
immediate withdrawal of O.C. Joshua's uh, signature and for him to tender an apology to uh, the oppressed population of his area, notably the Indian Division, one of the hardest, uh, hardest heat divisions uh, in the northwest and southwest regions of the country, the crisis in the northwest and southwest uh, regions. What do you think about this uh, very tough and hard position of a politician against another opposition politician? Uh, to an extent, O.C. Joshua being the first uh, national vice president of S uh, SDF and 2018 flag bearer, being so astounding that all Cameroonians know him. I think it's not only the pub secretary that is condemning, he has received a lot of condemnation related to the fact that he participated or he signed his signatures on this particular letter written to the 40 members of the U.S. Congress calling on, who were calling on the Joe, uh, the Joe Biden administration to repatriate some 70, more than 70,000 Cameroonians seeking asylum, asylum, in, uh, seeking asylum in the USA. I think it is his. I, I, would, I, stand, I support the PAP uh, Secretary General for that particular statement because even in, I, in my own position, I, 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 I ask why he had to participate without informing other members of the SDF, even the, the national chairman. Other members were not informed. They were already, sur already surprised to, to see his signature there. And he came on air to justify that he. The, that there's a diplomatic reason why he was involved in in in, in, in signing that his signature there and it is it is very funny that a member of an anglophone from from Jan division he had eight areas where this as far as this crisis is concerned and he he went ahead to sign the letter with that informing other members i i think it's not only the pub that is condemning other Cameroonians, especially members of asia we call condemn him for participating or his signature to appear on that letter that was uh, so. It is, it is. It is somehow. I support the part president, particular. Like it's a blunder, a political blunder. And looking at the content of the letter, talking about the image of Cameroon uh, being tarnished and misleading information about the socio-political and security tensions in Cameroon, uh, should he be uh, killed? Should he be killed, so to speak? Should he be? Uh, beaten from all directions simply because he signed a letter to protect the image of Cameroon with the intention of saying that no, you people shouldn't talk about this thing in a way that is misleading, in a way that it will tarnish the image of the country. Uh, Mr. Babila, the key issue, why the key issue why Cameroonians are condemning, the key issue about this particular letter is the fact that they wanted, according to, uh, they, they, they wanted the more than 70 Cameroonian seeking asylum to come back to Cameroon. And we are very clear, it is very clear that the political atmosphere in Northern Cyrus in to the anglophone crisis. We cannot pretend that the crisis has come to an end. People are still dying in Norway and Southwest. For a member of a political party that SDF, we all know the stand of SDF as far as anglophone crisis is concerned. They have ever seen the calling that they should put an end to this crisis. And take note, this political party did not participate in municipal and legislative election. And they have stand on many occasions to say no, that anglophone crisis should be tabled on Cameroon Parliament, National Assembly, which is ongoing. But unfortunately, they have done nothing. For a member of a political party like or like SDF and Joshua Osit for that for that matter, who is who is the national vice president and being the 2018 flag bearer to come and we had the reason why Cameroonian condemn him members of police or SDF is because he did not inform any other member by participating. And I, I stand by supporting Jack Derry that he was supposed to be supposed to mount pressure during this but the last from, uh, apart from being a member of the Social Democratic Front, above that he is a um, member of parliament, a parliamentarian of the nation, not a parliamentarian. Yes, we, we are not refusing. A party or a we, we are not refusing, Mr. Babila Jonathan. We are saying that he, as a national, as a, as a member of parliament, a parliament for the whole Cameroon, what, what part had he played to see that Anglophone crisis should be tabled to the Cameroon parliament? It is very funny that it's a parliament of different countries that are calling on the Cameroon government or the Cameroon parliament to table the Anglophone crisis. And he, as a member of parliament, what part had he played to table that Anglophone crisis should, should be put uh, to an end? Rather than writing it, we are not refusing. He write the letter to protect the image of Cameroon because, according to U.S. Congress, those asylums should not be sent back to Cameroon related to the socio political atmosphere. He and his peers have been fighting for the crisis to be discussed in Parliament. They have been mounting pressure, protesting in Parliament, and, uh, and all of that. Oh yeah, Mr. Babila, it's not enough. It's not enough. I support, I see Peter's point, and they related to the, what his concerns later related to Joshua Osi. Joshua Osi is member, is a flag bearer. And it is, it is very clear now that we seen in the last two weeks that uh, 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 the, the national cha chairman uh, uh, Fundi might resign, and which is we are seeing that the next person, the closest person that might take over the national chairman is Joshua Osi. 
So Cameroonians are looking, as a member of SD, are looking as Joshua also at the next national chairman, the flag bearer of, of the, the social democracy, for, for him to take this, such a decision in more concern. Other members, I think it's not only Jandera, even within the, the SDF, other members are not happy with him for participating without informing them. We are not refusing that he was trying to, demand, the, the, to, to defend the image of Cameroon. But what about the party, the decision of the party, the party ideologies or resolution as per whatever is going on in the country? So he was supposed to consult other members. Even he cannot consult other members, he was supposed to consult national chairman that I want to participate in this. Take note on that letter, 59 are from CBDM, and only very few, two from SD and others, by taking such a decision, it's a political blunder. And I, I support uh, Jean Derrick from related what he has written on the letter. President Jean Derrick thinks that he should table an apology to the uh, people who are suffering, notably in his um, area of origin. From, from, from the division, from division, division Mr. Babila. The rest of the two English-speaking regions for signing that letter. Yes, Do if, you I, so? if I were in his shoe, in his shoe I would also I would, I would, I would table an apology. That um, I apologize because we know that he is also from Zian Division, and we have known the crisis as far as uh, the, the, as far as the Anglophone crisis is concerned in Zian Division. And Mr. Babila, we should tell you that in Zian Division, many Anglophones from Southwest who are in Nigeria as refugees are from Zian Division because it's a neighboring and man and manual division. So we to to truly really tell you how hit the crisis going on in those remote areas and Zian and, and manual division for a person of his cal of caliber to come and sign such a letter. He, he, he called for the concern, especially of Anglophones, because it, it came showing to the world that we, as a people, were pretending about the Anglophone crisis. The, the crisis is gone, going. People are dying, but we keep pretending and putting ourselves, our political interests first before the ordinary people and the people who are dying in the bushes. The it's crisis is ongoing. People are dying, but does that mean that there is no hope? The, the because w w when you, we talk, uh, w the way you are talking now, um, somebody uh, said in a seminar in Boya that when people keep using the word uh, deepening crisis, it means that they don't wonder it should come to an end. They, 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 don't, they are giving a painting a kind of a hopeless situation. No, we, when we say it's ongoing, we are not, we wish, all, all Cameroonian wish that the crisis come to an end. We wish that the crisis come to an end, Mr. Babila. I think people of Norway and, and, and Southwest, they are tired of being refugees. In Nigeria, tired of being IDPs in Douala, Yahweh, and other part of, of, of this country. And they are tired of poverty and uh, hunger. And they are tired of dying. We wish that the crisis will come to an end. But we not sit on platform like this and be telling people that the crisis will come to an end. But we wish that it should come to an end. It had not come to an end, Mr. Babila Jonathan. No, the, the, then the, we the, wish. The, the we authorities are saying that it is progressively moving towards an end, that things are improving positively in several parts of those yeah, but it's not that the whole thing has come to an end not that the whole thing has come to an end but it's progressively but the authority itself should look to for a way to put an end to this crisis we should not keep hoping and using time waste or del delaying tactics let's do if there's a way that they can put an end to the crisis put an end to it and the question and is how to put an end to it we'll not stop asking this question until the crisis comes to an end how to put an end to it when they have called and i keep calling there was a dialogue but we keep calling that there should be a sincere say dialogue and honest dialogue with the all the the camps or the party involved to be on the platform to come to a, we call for a sincere honest dialogue all the the parties that are involved party a and party b should be on the platform on the table and agree on how to can put an end to this crisis mr babila jonathan if you're a newborn baby in cameroon how to can put an end to anglophone crisis call the parties involved let them sit on the table you are a cameroonian i am a cameroonian what do what, what can we do to put an end to this crisis what, what do you want what do you want me to do what are you saying that Cameroon should be separate what do you say that what is what's their own concern or is it concerning Cameroon let's agree on it and then we're we all Cameroonians the issue of ambassador and others we are just that's just normal talking that people are talking we are all Cameroonians we wish for a better Cameroon you're not a better Cameroon than me because you are administrative authority or because you're not a, because you're a president of parliamentary no you're a better Cameroon more a better Cameroon than me because you are you are patriotic you you you, you, you think uh, positively for Cameroon we want that Cameroon should be Cameroon cannot be suffering people as we are talking that there are sick children no one so are not going to school there are sick children no one so we cannot afford what to fit on and we, 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 so we are all, all we are praying that they should put an end to this crisis by again coming to sit on the platform, on a table, and, and, and dialogue. We are all Cameroonians. Nobody is, is more Cameroonian than the other. Right. Is, we should be clear about this. Gentle Clovis, political analyst and historian, thank you for joining us today. Uh, thanks very much, Mr. Babila Jonathan. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. Seeking us what comes up next.